Do you want to build a training and competence tracker as part of your ISO 9001 quality management system? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can go about building out the foundations of a training tracker using SharePoint Online. My name is Dougie Wood, and I'm a Microsoft MVP. I've been building out SharePoint solutions for the past 15 years with a heavy focus on quality management systems. I also work with organizations all over the world. So if you want to build a SharePoint solution like this, then get in touch using the link in the description below. But for now, let's jump in and take a look at how we build out this training tracker. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create our SharePoint site. Now, you could create this as a team site, but I prefer to use communication sites because usually this is something that will be part of the intranet. Um, so everybody in the organization would likely have access to it to be able to see it. Of course, you can lock it down if you wanted to. Now, I am going to create a separate video to show you how to create a better looking homepage for the training tracker. But for now, I'm just going to focus on the SharePoint lists which are going to drive this. Now, there's going to be a number of different SharePoint lists which are going to drive this. We're going to need to have things like an employees list. Uh, we're also going to have a config list, which will be the list that will be used to actually almost configure the training um, that, that is required. Um, and that will then go into... Um, the actual training list once a new employee is added. So what we would also do on top of this system is usually have some Power Automate workflows, which when you add somebody to the employees list, it'll automatically take all the tasks from the config list and put them into the training. So basically, when you get new starters in, you can automatically issue them some training records. Now you can see I'm starting to fill out this config list with some columns that are going to be required. So things like the employee, so the employee name, um, some choice fields, so maybe the role. Now this obviously can be completely customized to your requirements, but typical roles might be like pro uh, production operator, quality inspector, um, engineers, things like that. But again, it's totally um, up to you what you want to include as part of this. Then we might have a uh, type. Um, uh, so actually, this is um, training type. So again, we can choose whatever options we like in there, and you can completely bespoke that. Another choice field we're going to use um, will be for our training provider. So whether this is something that is internal, like an internal instructor-led training, or whether it's something external uh, from a certain supplier, um, or whether it's a e-learning course. Um, again, if you've got different options in there, you could choose to have different options. You can also set default options as well. So if most of the training is gonna be a certain type, you can get it to automatically default to that specific option uh, within inside the column as well. I'm gonna add another choice column here, and this will be for my renewal frequency. So typically this would be in months, so it might be um, 12 months, 24 months, uh, 36 months, 72, or never, for example. Again, I'm just setting a default there that typically most of the trainings are going to be 12 months. So I'm going to get it automatically tagged that. So I don't have to auto, I don't have to go and tag that every single time because most of them, 90% of them are going to be on a 12 month period. So then I'm going to um, go uh, and just move back out of here. So I'll just go back to my employee area. Um, and I'm just going to edit in grid view. So basically, um, oh, in fact, actually, um, I'm going to just add in a new item in here. So this is where I'm going to add in, for example, a forklift safety training. So this is going to be my training record. The uh, role is quality inspector. The training type is induction, it's e-learning, and it's renewal every 12 months. So I'm just going to add in some different options in here. So again, I like to have plenty of test data in here just to make it nice and obvious what it's going to look like. Uh if you're interested in this system, then we do deploy it at a fixed price to our customers. Get in touch for a free demo using the link in the description below. Um, I should also mention you can color code. So if, for example, you wanted to have certain roles, different colors, different training types, different colors. You can choose to change these these colors as well if you wanted to. So I didn't quite like that kind of white background. So I've just changed the internal instructor background color there as well. Now, 
So I've got my employees list. I've got my config list. Um, so my config list essentially is the list where I'm going to be configuring. So these are all the kind of potential training um, records that we could have. But instead now what I'm going to do, is I'm, I'm also going to add a third list, which is my tracker. So this is the live items. So I said before, imagine if you added a new employee into the employees list, the system in the background would automatically go and grab all the um, training uh, records from the config list and then create an item uh, basically duplicate a copy all of the config training items for that employee maybe based on their role so depending on their role or their department for example and then create them in this tracker now I'm just adding a couple more uh, columns into the live tracker that that we'll need in here on top of the options that we had in the configuration so things like the actual employee the employee name I actually deleted it from the config list because we don't need the employee name in the config list um, because it's it's specific to everybody so you're not necessarily putting it per user in the config list but in the tracker you will need to know the employee you also need to know the status um, so whether it's uh, basically being waited to complete or if it's completed what the completion date actually will be and also um, maybe a renewal date. So based on the frequency um, of the, the actual training item that's set in the configuration list, when will be the next renewal date? Um, also, we might want to know who the assessor was. So who actually assessed um, this, this training and what level of competency does that particular employee have based on that training? So this is typically things like uh, aware, competent, expert, um, but again, you can define what options you maybe want in here. But it's really useful as well to be able to tag things with different levels. So say, for example, if you've got all of your experts, um, so now I've got some um, items in my config list. Then what I would be doing is I would be adding some additional columns into my employees list. So as I say, this might be things like uh, the role um, that, that they might have. Um, it could be, um, for example, we could use a lookup column um, to look up the config um, uh, of, of a particular area and pull through um, based on certain roles. If we had a separate list of roles, we could tag them in. But actually, what's probably easier um, is to have a column, a choice column, and just specify the role um, in that sense. You might also have additional columns of things like department, um, location, um, where they work, things like that. There's all sorts of different things you might want to tag with it. But um, um, basically now what I'm doing is I've added a people column so I can tag in um, the person's name and their role and that's what we're going to be using in our system to automatically create those training records. Um, I could also update the view so I can add in some additional things. So I could see, for example, when an employee was added. So I'm just changing the view here just to make it a bit neater. So I'm ordering it. So I've got the employee field first, then the role, then when it's created and who created it by as well. Um, so as I say, it's going to look up based on the role. It's going to look up based uh, the, the configuration trainings based on that role and then it will create them in the tracker from that. You can then see in the tracker, this is what it would look like in the tracker, and these additional fields we populated to say maybe the completion date, the renewal date um, there would be obviously automatically populated based on the completion date. So if it was 12 months, it'd automatically have to 26, but just for testing purposes, I'm just showing you this here. You'd also add attachments. So maybe there was a certification or training you might want to attach to it. And you also put some comments and notes on here. So you could say, Dougie is a pro at driving forklifts down. So these comments are all attached to that training record, which is all stored inside of this list. We can change the statuses. And by refreshing, you can see that it's changed it on here as well. It means in our training tracker, we can then filter by, for example, uh, training which is not started. I could save that view. So I could then easily jump backwards and forwards between all items and the not started training tracker items. I might also filter by things like experts. So if I want to find all the experts in my business, um, I could then filter by the competency level of expert. So these people could, might become our mentors, for example. Now, by copying that link, I could go back to our homepage or any other area of SharePoint, find a navigational button or tile like this, 
and I could update it. Now, I'm not saying you would have this on your homepage of your training site, but it's just to show you how views work. We could then add experts, paste our link in, click on republish, and then we can jump directly to a predefined view of our training tracker. So finally, yep, we go through our config list, we've got our employees list, um, which obviously then creates everything inside of our tracker as well. We can um, obviously group, so we can group by our tracker items and we can filter it um, maybe by employee. So we could see all the training by a specific employee, see where they're up to and add additional filters if we want to look for based on status, for example, or if we're looking for uh, training based on role, we can filter it by that as well. So there's so many different ways we can slice and dice this data to, to find things. So for example, this is our maintenance engineer view. We can filter by quality inspectors. Uh, again, save that view. So then we can see all of the training trackers based on quality inspectors. There's so many different ways you could slice and dice this. It's completely up to you um, how you want to achieve this. But as another example here, I'm just going to paste in another view. So now say, for example, I was looking for training trackers based on quality inspector role. I could then simply add in that view as a button, click on that, and that takes me to this view. If you enjoyed that video, please do subscribe. Also, continue to watch me build out QMS in SharePoint by clicking on the video on the screen now. See you there.